With the first pick. Lawrence in a foot race. Will they catch him? Touchdown, Tigers! The Jacksonville Jaguars select Lawrence. Back left corner of the end zone for Amari Rodgers, and they do it again. Another Clemson touchdown. Welcome into our final edition of the Trevor Cast. Hayes Carline, Matt Hayes with you. Um, Matt, it's a... uh, Kind of a glorious, sad, I guess, uh, day that this is coming to an end, but we've got a, uh, a special treat for the audience. Yeah, we do. Uh, you know what? It's been a long journey. I hope we've given everyone a lot of different angles to look at this idea of this franchise quarterback, this player that's going to change everything about this franchise in Trevor Lawrence. Uh and we're wrapping it up now with Trent Baalke, the general manager of the Jaguars. It's hard to believe Trevor Lawrence will be a Jaguar tonight. Isn't that hard to believe that tonight the card goes in? We've talked about it for months. And it's a night that, you know, we believe will monumentally change the fortunes of this franchise, city, fan base in a positive direction forever. Right. I mean, and quite frankly, uh, I truly believe that if the Jaguars do this right tonight. They will be the talk of the NFL moving forward for the next three, four, five, one week days. They will be the talk. It'll be all about them. Absolutely. And uh, we really appreciate uh, Trent Baalke joining us, the Jaguars general manager. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I think he gave us some good insights into the process that they've gone through um, and what they really like about Trevor Lawrence. Yeah, I, I think it's clear they're not worried about some of this, the, the, the most recent outside noise of the chip on the shoulder or any other any other recent criticisms of a guy who basically is the cleanest draft prospect maybe in 10, 20, 30 years. Yeah, and uh, it, it's been great. Uh, Trent is, uh, you know, kind of uh, the latest in a long line of great interviews. Matt, you've done an outstanding job. Uh, we really appreciate our friends at Claude Nolan Cadillac for sponsoring the Trevor cast. Claude Nolan Cadillac's been beginning lasting relationships since 1905, and we really appreciate their support throughout this. Uh, but let's get to it. Here is Jaguars general manager, Trent Baalke. Trent Baalke, Jaguars GM, joining us. Trent, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate it. And, uh, man, what an exciting few months this must uh, have been for you guys. Yeah, thanks for having me, Matt and Hayes. Hey, Trent, uh, the trade value chart that Jimmy Johnson made famous three decades ago, is that points value system still relevant in today's draft? It still is. You know, there's uh, everybody still looks at it and recognizes it. There's teams that have built their own. But uh, when it comes down to the draft day, uh, most teams still look at that and, and, and weigh it pretty heavily. Trent, what was your first impression of, of Trevor Lawrence? When did he first appear on your radar as a talent evaluator? Uh, the, the first game he ever played in college football. You know, I, I think he's been on everybody's radar since then. Awfully talented player and uh, uh, impeccable character. There's all the stars align when you look at him as a player and as a person. How much did you see him grow as a as a player over his three year career with Clemson? Uh, he's grown a lot. You know, I've had the privilege of watching him multiple times throughout the years live. At, at different games around the country. And, uh, you know, he's a guy that's obviously caught the attention of every evaluator for early in his career, uh, all the way throughout his career. Hey, Trent, um, what's the value of a chip on the shoulder? Or will you stick to the traditional idea that your tape is your resume when you're evaluating players? I, I think you have to, you know, every good player I've, I've come across you know, in their own way as a little bit of a competitor. They're elite competitors, you know, and I, do you have to have a chip on your shoulder to, to be an elite competitor? I don't think so. Uh, you know, there's there's guys that, uh, you know, get themselves ready to go in, in a lot of different ways. So uh, what you're looking at is what what does it look like on film? What does it feel like when you talk to them? And you know, we're we're looking for elite competitors, and we feel there's a lot of them in this draft. Yeah, and Trent, I was surprised that there was some uh, kind of criticism directed at Trevor um, from comments that he made in a in a recent uh, interview. You know, we've talked to uh, you know Dabo Swinney, we've talked to Joey King, we've talked to uh, some of Trevor's teammates, and 
you know, it seems like to a man, I mean, they rave about his work ethic and and his passion for winning and his passion for getting better uh, each day on on the football field. Has that been kind of what you guys have gathered as well from your conversations with people? Yeah, I think, you know, when you look at elite competitors put on the film, you know, what do they do? Uh, what do they do in preparation uh, to get themselves ready? You know, that, that's what we look at, you know, and, and the film is their resume uh, to a large extent, but there's other things that go into it. But uh, we certainly don't have any reservations about Trevor or a lot of other guys in this draft. Hey, Trent, what, what's the skeleton, per se, of, of, a, of a franchise quarterback? Like, what are the key points you guys think half the hit to get a fran- be, for him to be a franchise-type quarterback? Well, you know, obviously they have to have the physical ability and then they have to have the leadership and the leadership may, may be more important than the physical ability, you know, when it all comes down to it. But uh, they've got they've got to be able to handle the game mentally. They've got to be able to handle the game physically. And if they can do those two te- two things and, and lead at the same time, I think you're looking at a franchise quarterback. Yeah, one thing that they, they... – uh, coaches that we've talked to keep coming back to with Trevor is how twitchy he is as an athlete for being six six. Can you kind of speak to that, Trent? How how rare uh, is that in, in in your opinion? If if you think it's rare at all, uh, that kind of twitchiness he has for being a a guy that's six six. Yeah, I think the, the word that I use a lot in describing players that have these qual- unique. You know, it, it's unique to have somebody that's six six that has twitch in their feet and twitch in their arm, twitch in their body. You know, it's, uh, you know, and you're looking for that at every position. You know, when, when we evaluate film, I don't care if it's uh, offensive line or defensive line or, or corners or receiver, you go through all the, you're looking for twitch, guys that ha- have explosiveness in their body. Trent, how difficult has it been doing interviews over Zoom instead of where the guy's right in front of you and you can eyeball him and he can eyeball you and you, you can get a feeling for what's going on? Yeah, I, I just said this up up there on another interview. You know, I'm, I'm not an interview guy. I'm not a Zoom guy. It, it's, it's hard for me to get used to this new way. But unfortunately, it's, it's where we're at. And you got to take the, the negatives and turn them into a positive. So, you know, we, we've done an awful lot of calls uh, Zoom calls between personnel staff and, and coaching staff to get to know these players as well as we can. And uh, we're trying to turn, like I say, turn the negative into a positive and figure out a way to get it done that uh, in the past may have been easier, uh, but you know, easy isn't always the best. And I think our staff's done an excellent job of, of uh, getting to know these players uh, extremely well. We feel very good about where we're at with the draft process and where the board is currently. And uh, we're just we're now you know focusing in on the the final stages and getting ready to execute. Trent, I know the the initial virtual meetings that you guys had with Trevor. Uh, you told us that you uh, weren't a part of those. Those were more uh, Coach Meyer and, and and his staff and things like that. Did you get to be a part of of one of the five with Trevor? And and what was that process like for you getting to meet with him virtually? I, I've t- I've talked to him several times and feel very comfortable. I think the the you know what you're trying to do with the Zoom calls is, is get to know these guys as well as you can and get to know their football acumen as, as the best you can. So, and our staff, like I say, our, our coaching staff from uh, Coach Meyer down through Bevs and and uh, Shadi, who have been dealing with Trevor on a consistent basis. I think we feel very good about where, where where we're at in the process. So, Trent, this is kind of an inner working GM question for you. Uh, you know, the first round clearly is critical in the draft, but is the foundation of a franchise built on those middle round middle round picks you guys make? I think I think the foundation's made throughout, not just the middle rounds. I think you can find good players in the later rounds. We were able to do that in San Francisco. A lot of teams have been able to find uh, guys later in the draft. I think you have to take a hard look at, at, at your own situation, what you're looking for in players, and value them accordingly. Not every player in this draft fits every team or every system, uh, whether it's culture or, or scheme. So you're just doing the best you can to build a board that's reflective of your situation, and then you go make the picks. Trent, uh, Trevor was, I think, about 213 at his pro day. Is there a weight that 
you would like to see him get to or a weight that you just think naturally he'll he'll fill out to in the NFL? Yeah, I, I think that's up to our performance team to, to really sit down with the athlete. I think we feel comfortable about where he's at currently and feel there's things we can do to help him get to his most natural and best playing weight. But that's going to be uh, worked through with the with the performance team and, and uh, making sure he's at his, at his very best. Great stuff. Well, Trent, we can't thank you enough for your time. Uh, certainly everybody around here is, is very excited to see what, what the next few days bring uh, for this franchise. And uh, we certainly appreciate your help and certainly uh, best of luck to you uh, over uh, the, the course of draft weekend. Really appreciate your time, Trent. Thanks, guys. You're listening to the 1010XL TrevorCast, brought to you by our friends at Claude Nolan Cadillac, beginning lasting relationships since 1905. Awesome. Really appreciate Trent Balky's time. Um, what was uh, one of the big takeaways that you had from that? Uh, I, I think it's, it's always good when you're talking to a general manager to, to be able to weed into the process mm-hmm. of how things work. Um, I, I was fascinated by how they do things, uh, how they evaluate players, and it's not unlike what we typically think, but to hear someone say that and, and recognize that and confirm it is really makes you think, all right, I think these guys are moving in the right direction. Yeah, I think so too. And again, it's cool to hear Trent Baalke kind of talk about an aspect of Trevor's game that we've heard from a lot of uh, coaches that, that you've done such a great job of getting us in touch with, that twitch that he has for being 6'6", um, but how sudden his movements can be, whether it's running or whether it's that arm and, and how quick his release is with that and uh, and just how rare that is. We always think of six foot six guys as sort of statues and, and plotters, and uh, Trevor is just anything He's, but that. Yeah, completely opposite. I go back to when we spoke with Mac Brown about it. He said, you know, you watch him on film, you prepare for him, uh, you see, okay, we got this covered, we've got that covered, then you get on the field, and you have no idea how athletic he is until you're out there on the field and you're standing there and you're watching him, and it's a completely different game at that point. And, and I think that's really kind of the hidden gem part of Trevor Lawrence. We know what kind of thrower he is. We know, you know, we know how he throws the ball on time with anticipation, the accuracy, all of that, uh, the beautiful deep ball, all of it. It's, it's like Mac Brown said, when you get on the field and you see that, oh, he also does this? Wow. Then it becomes unique. I tell you what, Matt, we've had such a great listening audience uh, throughout the Trevor cast. It's been so awesome having people you know, come up to us and tell us how much they enjoy it. They deserve a little bonus, don't you think? And you know what? I, it, it's interesting because we're at last episode, and I knew you would come with a fastball. Not only did you come with a fastball, you're like De- Jacob DeGrom faster. You're I like tell you one, what, 102 right now. <laughs> well, uh, well, I appreciate that. And our good friend Denny Thompson, who knows so much about the art of quarterbacking from a mechanic standpoint, uh, was kind enough to join us for, for a few minutes. So uh, we want you to hear from Denny about Trevor Lawrence and his mechanics. So here is our interview with Denny Thompson from the Sports Den. Denny Thompson from the Sports Den joining us now, uh, master of all things quarterbacks. And uh, Denny, thanks so much for the time. Um, just start with your first observation of Trevor. I know you, you've, you've seen him uh, and you've got uh, a knowledge of him, uh, first person that, that none of us have. Uh, what was that like seeing him throw live? Well, the very, the very first time that I saw him was actually in Elite 11 camp, his going into his senior year of high school. Uh, it was like April or May up in Charlotte. And this was a camp that had everybody at it. Like it was the final regional for the East Coast. So the best of the best from the East Coast were there. Um, you're talking probably, I'm going to guess, eight to ten Division One quarterbacks. There wasn't anyone at that camp even remotely close to Trevor Lawrence that day. Like remotely close. And so I came back. Set on the sports den, man, I just saw the future number one pick. This is when he was, you know, 16 years old, 17 years old. Fast forward a couple of months, um, their high school played a local high school here, Bartram Trail, in a game on ESPN, and we went up to Cartersville to watch that and was blown away by how he looked in person and how advanced he was as a high school senior and what they were able to do offensively. Blown away to the point that I actually this time tweeted out that he was going to be the number one overall pick uh, in 2021. So it For was, the Jaguars, yeah. Nostradamus. I did. <laughs> I did. That was, that was luck right The there. greatest but, prediction of all time. 
I didn't know the Jaguars were going to be this bad that long. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you know, it, it, it wasn't like one of those things where I think everybody in that stadium that night was thinking about it. And he was just that much better than everyone else, and he was doing things at a high school level that I had never seen a quarterback do at a high school level, and he was doing it effortlessly. It, it was really impressive. Now, Danny, you coach uh, both college and pro quarterbacks at your Six Points Academy. What, what if, I, if you had to, just a, a, couple, a couple things, what makes an elite quarterback, and when do you know you've got one? Well, there, yeah, we could we could spend all day on that. There's to keep it pretty simple. Um, you know, elite starts with with um, application with the ability, right? And so, if you a lot of times we'll have kids come in who don't they're not real whippy with their arm. Their throwing is not a natural thing for them. They didn't grow up throwing something, or and then when I say throwing something, I mean anything. Like we've all seen the three year old that throws the rock further than the other three year old, right? That's throwing something. Um, when you look at a guy like Trevor Lawrence, you can tell that while he's been he's been trained really well and he's put a lot of time into this, this is a natural skill for him. And so that's the very first step of, okay, this guy's got a chance to be elite. And there's a lot of those guys. Where you really start to get into elite is preparation, is the way they work. And, and this, you know, you start to see this usually um, their freshman, sophomore, junior year of high school of, okay, this guy just grinds a little differently than everybody else. He picks things up. He's coachable. He, he's very coordinated. You know, all the things that, that we associate with athleticism, but then it just looks different. And then when you get to Trevor's level, when you get to major division one, the ball pops out. The, the, the example that I use all the time, guys, is when you're at a baseball game or when you're at a golf tournament, the ball sounds a lot different when right. they hit, a, hit it yep. than when you yep. hit it, right? Yep. The same thing for quarterbacks. Exact same thing. You can watch 10 quarterbacks throw, and if there's a guy who's elite, elite, it's going to look and sound a lot different than the other nine. And, and that's what Trevor's had from the very first time that I saw him is that ball just came out smooth, effortless, but different. It just looked different. Even in a camp with 120 invite-only quarterbacks, it just looked different, and it still does to this day. Danny, I've loved listening to you talk about Trevor on on the Sports Den, really throughout the the draft process. And and what I like is you'll talk about things that he does need to work on, and things you see that and we we get it. No such thing is a is a perfect prospect, but in your opinion, what are some things that he does still need to clean up a little bit uh, to take his game to an even higher level? Yeah, I think there's two main things. Uh, the, the first thing is mechanically, there are some things that I'd like to see done differently um, by Trevor, and I'm sure he knows that as well. He's, you know, when you're six six, there's a lot of things that can happen uh, through a throwing motion. There's a lot more than go wrong than somebody who's five ten, um, and, and so there's times where he'll get off balance. He'll get real heavy on his front side, front foot, or he'll rotate out of a throw a little too early, and it'll sell on him. Um, usually guys like that, it, it shows when they're throwing left in pressure situations, you're throwing down the middle. And so I, I think that's something he would, I would like to see him touch up on. The other thing that I feel like not many people have really talked about is the way he protects himself. I, I, he's going to he's gonna have to learn pretty quickly um, that those hits he took from Sean Wade at Ohio State and some of the other hits that if you watch his, his games, he's not going to get up on Sundays. You can't take those hits, and so you have to have eyes everywhere. And he's he's very astute to the game. I think that's probably his greatest attribute. He understands where pressure is coming from, what coverages they can mix with pressures, and all that kind of stuff. But I don't know if it's you know he's a little too brave, a little too competitive. I don't know what it is, but he's going to have to learn to protect himself really quickly, especially with all the hype that he's got coming in. Um, he, that's that's something he's got to work on right away. Danny, do you see him being more of a, I don't know, shotgun, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, pistol type of player? Because it, it, is he a guy that you want to put under center and put him in that straight play action type deal? But a guy with his athletic ability, wouldn't you rather have him back there being being able to make quicker decisions, whether whether to throw or run? Oh, if I had to pick, absolutely, right? If I had to pick, I would absolutely put him in the gun. I do think when you go under center with a team, 
that maybe doesn't have all the pieces. You do create extra gaps. You, you do create extra issues for today's defense. So it, that could be a way uh, to kind of walk him into the game is, is a dominant running game uh, with a fullback, with a good tight end, or even 12 or 22 personnel, two tight ends, something like that, to create those extra gaps. Um, that the defense has to account for. But I think long-term, yeah, absolutely, Matt. I, I think you want to see him in the shotgun. You want to see him directing your offense. You want to see a lot of motion so that he can recognize coverage right away because as tall as he is, he is amazing at getting rid of the ball. His release is super quick for somebody who's six foot six, um, as quick as anybody has ever seen at that size. So I think you do, like long-term, he's the kind of guy you let sit back there and just – Feel it. We've always we've all watched Tom Brady, Peyton Manning when they get hot, and every single time they drop back, you thought, "Okay, this is a completion. Just how far is it going to go?" <laughs> I think he's got that. I think that's that's what he is. And the thing is, you can't discount about Trevor. And you didn't even ask me this, but I'm going to say it anyway since y'all are talking to me. <laughs> he would have been the number one pick three years in a row. Yeah. Right. Right. So th- I mean. I almost feel like I'm doing it. I almost feel like a lot of us are trying to find faults to somebody who may be the first in history three-time number one first pick, without a doubt, with no question. He would have been the number one pick his freshman year, sophomore year, and this year. Um, I think we're all kind of searching for things now, and, and that's why I say I think that he is that next Manning, that next Brady, that every single time he drops back to throw the ball, you can have – a pretty high level of confidence that something good is about to happen. No question about it. Denny, thank you so much. Uh, again, listen to Denny Thompson on the Sports Den. Uh, Six Points Academy. If you've got a, a young uh, young quarterback up and coming, get him in front of Denny. He'll coach him up. Uh, Denny, thank you so much for your time, man. We really appreciate it. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks, brother. You're listening to the 1010XL Trevorcast, brought to you by our friends at Claude Nolan Cadillac, beginning lasting relationships since 1905. Really appreciate Denny's time. And again, thanks again to our friends at Claude Nolan Cadillac for sponsoring the Trevorcast. Claude Nolan Cadillac, beginning lasting relationships since 1905. Uh, Matt, I want to thank you. This has been so much fun uh, to work on this project with you. You've done such an outstanding job, phenomenal partner, and uh, it's been just amazing going through this 10 week process and hearing from all the different sources uh in in what they bring from their perspective to Trevor Lawrence and um you know really appreciate it and uh it's been a lot of fun yeah many thanks to you too Hayes I mean well, thanks, I, I I think uh together I think we gave the Jacksonville fans and fans outside of Jacksonville that are listening on iTunes, Spotify, mm-hmm. you know, Twitter or whatever wherever you can get it wherever you get your podcast you can you can hear the Trevor cast um I think we gave him a lot of good to- content, a lot of different angles uh, to di- di- digest Trevor Lawrence, be it a coach, be it a teammate, uh, be it a media member, be it a general manager. It's a good way to actually break down completely this guy who could be, again, could be, you know, a guy that plays quarterback through his franchise for 10, 12, 13, 15 years. That would be great. And want to thank uh, Graham Marsh for putting it all together for us well done, week Graham. in well and week out. The uh, the backbone and heart of the Trevor cast, Graham Marsh. So thank you, Graham. And also want to thank our outstanding uh, lineup of guests that, that we've had throughout this whole thing. And again, you can go back and listen to uh, archived episodes if you've missed any. Um, David Cutcliffe, the Duke head coach. Darian Rincher, uh, uh, Trevor's teammate at Clemson. Charlie Weiss, who obviously uh, coached Tom Brady, Super Bowl winning offensive coordinator, quarterback guru. Mac Brown, the outstanding coach at North Carolina, who's gone against Trevor Joey King, Trevor Lawrence's high school coach. Randy Mueller, former NFL executive of the year, giving us that front office perspective on Trevor. Grace Rayner, who covers Clemson for the athletic. Uh, Ryan Leaf, who was just so outstanding. That was such a great job, yeah. uh, Matt, to get him uh, really uh commends you for that because he was just so brilliant that story he told about trevor uh visiting clemson and and spilling sort of his soul and trevor being yeah. front and center i thought that spoke so much about trevor as a person so fantastic uh fantastic idea for for ryan leaf Dabo swinney the clemson head coach really appreciate his time and trent balky the jaguars gm who obviously uh we're hoping we'll have uh, the best three days of, of his career and Urban Meyer's career uh, coming up as they select Trevor Lawrence tonight, uh, along with then uh, many more picks to come um, as, as the draft plays out. So thank you to everybody who joined us on the Trevor cast. Um, 
Thank you again to Claude Nolan Cadillac for sponsoring the Trevor Cast. Uh, for Matt Hayes, for Graham Marsh, this is Hayes Carlion. Thank you so much for listening. <laughs>